Hello guys, this is Modish Major here, bringing you some commentary over some Destiny PvP gameplay. Uh, the score in the background is something like a 36 and 5. I can't quite remember because whenever you check the scoreboard in this game, uh, you don't get to see your kills and deaths. You do get to see your KD ratio. So if you have a calculator handy, maybe you can work that out. Uh, but to be honest, you know, I'm, I may be intense about my gaming. I may be what you might call a hardcore gamer, but I don't keep a pocket calculator on the side to make mathematical calculations. Perhaps you guys are scoffing at me thinking, <laughs> what a filthy casual. <laughs> but I don't know. Me, on the other hand, I'm not a calculator kind of guy. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a pretty entertaining gameplay. I make good use of my skills. The Hunter Golden Pistol is absolutely golden-like and tears off faces and is entirely unbalanced. But there we go. It's fun to use. It's kind of a little bit of a guilty pleasure. You feel dirty when you do it afterwards, but it's a good kind of dirty. It's a filthy, dirty, sexual experience for all involved. Um... But, you know, Destiny PvP is not something I really want to continue talking about on this channel. I think, A, it's a beta, so there's probably going to be a lot of changes and tweaks uh, going into the full game. And, you know, this isn't the final product. And I think what I'm going to say is fairly similar to what you've heard other people say. Mainly people like Delementary. I'm fairly leaning on the negative side of things. And I think it's boring to fill your channel with, like, constant negativity. Uh, I don't mind the occasional video, you know, that points out criticisms constructively, but I think I've already done enough of that, and I think it would just, you know, gradually decline into, I don't like this aspect of the game because it sucks, man. And then it would just sound like I'm crying because I got beaten on Destiny earlier or something like that, so it's, it's just not really worth it. But uh, I thought it was an entertaining gameplay nonetheless, so I thought I'd put it over the background. The actual topic that I wanted to discuss with you guys today is the fact that patience is a virtue as us gamers. Now, you probably already have a vague idea of what I'm going to go into if you're anything like me, if you have the mindset towards gaming that I've had for quite some time. Um, for the last couple of years, uh, maybe even five years plus, uh, I've been looking at E3s, I've been clamoring over journalistic information of like, you know, what's coming out in this year, what are the trailers, what are the developers saying about their games, and a lot of the time we get a lot of buzzwords, we hear a lot of the stuff we want to hear, but we don't necessarily see a lot of the stuff we want to see uh, in our games, and I can't tell you the amount of disappointments I face as of recent years in my multiplayer FPSs. Uh, you know, for me, I've got Halo Reach that didn't live up to my expectations personally. I've got uh, the decline in the Call of Duty games. I thought that Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2, yes, they definitely had their problems. Uh, I felt like they had a huge amount of potential. The Treyarch games are still going fairly strong, um, but they don't interest me in the way that Black Ops 1 did, for example. After Black Ops 1, uh, I didn't find Black Ops 2 the most enticing game to me. I thought, like... I don't know, the competitive side of Call of Duty never particularly interested me, to be honest. Uh, they'd have to completely change those game mechanics around to actually get me invested in watching a competitive Call of Duty shooter. Um, because as a spectacle, I find it, oh my god, it could just put me to sleep any day of the week. I'm sure some of you guys feel differently, but that's just where I'm coming from. Um, so yeah, for me, you know, I've been, I grew up in a pretty darn good age for gaming. I feel like... You know, I started off with arena shooters like Unreal Tournament and Quake on the PC, moved into GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, which obviously had their fair share of problems due to their dated nature, um, but they most certainly were not lacking in the ideas department, in the creativity department, in the, uh, you know, in the attempt to make their multiplayer work as well as it does. Um, I think one of my biggest problems with games as of lately is that they feel like in order to... Uh, give depth to their multiplayer shooters there needs to be an idea of quantity over quality I feel like a lot of these Call of Duty games that release or maybe even crisis games that release they kind of have this initial wow factor this factor of look how many crazy gameplay mechanics there are look how many look how much stuff there is for me to do it feels like a playground but you slowly realize that the game hasn't been tailored to last in long run that there isn't room for a meta game to develop and I feel like there's a lot more simpler ways of improving your game, of structuring your game uh, to last longer, to you know benefit both sides of the audience without necessarily having to rely on gimmicks. It's something that Delementary has talked about in the past, but I kind of just want to develop upon some of those ideas uh, a little bit more. And I think you know Halo 4 to me showed that it had a little bit of what was I was looking for. You know, it had a aspects of 
hey, we will include some game mechanics that actually improve the metagame of Halo 4, but we'll also uh, add some that will completely overcomplicate it and make it a little bit of a mess to deal with. I think there's a common misconception amongst the gaming audience that some Halo players are very, very reluctant to change. And of course, in any community, you will have your diehard elitist fans, but you also have people who were warm and receptive towards the Thruster Pack, something that gave you an added movement option that let you mix up your approaches, that let you allow you to be more aggressive allowed you to be less predictable going into combat that was something that was taken into appreciation and if players learned to master this at a very early stage they found a lot of improvement and a lot of success through doing so and the same could be said with mechanics like the spring jump which allowed you to for example go to top middle on simplex uh, without other players being able to do so you had to cut all the way around uh, to top purple but then alternatively you had a game man mechanic that ruined the effectiveness of this new movement ability uh, which was not taken into account and that is the jetpack which was returned from Halo Reach and we already see saw problems with the game mechanic within Halo Reach there were already complaints to, to, ma to make the mistake twice seemed a little bit of an oversight in my opinion and I guess what I'm trying to get at is, you know, with a game like Halo, I feel like it's already been tried and tested that the gameplay mechanics are pretty darn strong in it, in terms of the base gunplay mechanics, the battle rifle, uh, the way that the co the combat, you know, just engages in the way that you strafe and the way that you lead your shot, etc. Players have grown to like this and it is an established part of the community. And to change around with that too much and to interfere with an already strong gunplay system only to overcomplicate and exacerbate the matter really detracts from the whole gameplay experience however there are elements of halo that i think could strongly be improved and the base one of these is the movement i have always felt that elements of halo 3 felt a little bit stiff and if there was something that was going to bring it up to the modern age that was going to make it more exciting and more fast paced without necessarily detracting from the gameplay experience it was going to be added movement options that every player had in their tool set every player had access to this and it was a question of who could utilize them the best and you know a lot of people going to say well sprint was a movement mechanic and a lot of people dislike that um, but that's only because it, you know there were there were more problems with sprint <laughs> for example the fact that they added the health to compensate for this uh, like to added the health so that when you went around the corner the shield time was longer so that players would play more passively in the long run and I just think that maybe it didn't fit with the core me themes and mechanics of Halo. Uh, Thruster Pack was a very minute change and a very appreciated change, but Sprint practically changed the whole way in which encounters would take place and made the gameplay in the long run a little bit more passive in some areas just because of the additional changes they made on top of that. I do think that a base movement speed would be appreciated uh, in of itself. Uh, they increased it from 100% to 110% uh, in one of the Halo 4 updates, and I thought it was a, a very widely appreciated change to the overall gameplay experience. Uh, but when it comes to sprint in of itself, you have this whole thing where if you sprint and then you put down the gun, you are unable to like get your gun straight back up, so it feels like you're punished for moving around the map, and it feels like you're more rewarded for playing defensive and catching sprinting players off guard, uh, which is not necessarily 100% appreciated in my opinion. Um, but, you know, overall, I just think that we have to look at the game and we have to say, you know, we do want change, but we want change in a refined way. We want change in a way that's going to give the players more options, but not necessarily cut off options from other players unnecessarily and unfairly. Uh, you don't want unavoidable situations where you're put into a battle or an engagement where you feel like you were unable to come out on top due to the game mechanics working against you, not to that player uh, but conversely, it's not the fact that that player used game mechanics to their strength for better than you. It's the fact that there was a game mechanic that was out of your reach that was unfairly used against you in a situation that was unavoidable. That, uh, you know, basically created a one-hit kill situation where you were essentially dead, a.k.a. the bolt shot. You don't want to be cutting off movement options. You don't want to be encouraging players to be more defensive. You want to give them more tools to navigate around the map, to be able to push into positions, to be able to be more aggressive, but only if they have the skill and the means to do so within their own core skill set of gameplay abilities. That's just the way I see it. I love aggressive gameplay and I love movement mechanics and I do want Halo to be improved in the long run. However, I see it with 
you know, Halo 5 Guardians, I don't want it to be in a way where it's like, hey, we took this mechanic from this game, this mechanic with this game, and this one's really going to wow you, and then you get bored of it in a day, and we're going to have to spend another year waiting for the next FPS to not have to abuse gimmicks to the nth degree and only be enjoyable for the first month of gameplay till everyone drops off and everyone's on forums complaining about how this game didn't give them the long-term enjoyment that they were actually looking from for their gameplay experience. Patience is a virtue, but patience from any person can eventually be exhausted, and I worry when I'm going to meet the end of my fuse, you know, I feel like this could be a last hurrah for gaming, this could be a, you know, I want these games to succeed, I want these games to do well, and if they don't, I'm going to lose a little bit of faith in the gaming industry overall, I understand that gaming has their moments where, you know, they're trying to adapt, every industry has, you know, these down points where, they're looking to the future and they're looking, you know, what players exactly want from their gameplay so I can understand it on a short-term basis, but on a long-term basis, I can't be having these defensive games coming out where the game is meant to be less of a spectacle and it's more about, uh, you know, reeling new customers in, etc. It annoys me to the nth degree. I hope you guys see where I'm coming from. Being a little bit negative, once again, I'll try and cut it out next video. I'll make a positive video in the future. You'll see. You'll see. You'll all see. <laughs> Oh yeah, and also, I think I should mention, uh, this gameplay in the background, um, I've done a little bit of post-editing, I added like extra commentary into it, and I realised over watching this gameplay again, that this is not actually the gameplay I meant to post, and I've lost it. So this gameplay is kind of a fairly average gameplay, but it was quite, it looked quite similar to the initial gameplay I was going to post, um, and it's like a 3.0 ratio for kill gameplay, so I'm sorry for misleading you guys at the beginning of this video, I tried to rectify it at the end. That's just how it goes. But I was really happy with the first take of the first part of the commentary. So I didn't want to screw up. You know how it is. I'm a scrub. I'm sorry. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. I've been Modest Major. Peace.